Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have the same problem that we've done before. Notice we have two radicals on the left side, a term on the right side, and the way it was recommended that we solve this problem is by moving one of the radicals to the right side. The minus the square root of 5x minus 9 was moved to the right and then we square both sides. But what would happen if we didn't do that? What would happen if we let both of the radicals stay on the left side and then we square both sides as is? Well, let's go find out, and then you know why it's recommended to do the other method. All right, let's square the left side, and let's square the right side. When we square the left side, we get the first term squared, which is 7x minus 10, plus the last term squared, which is plus 5x minus 9, because when we square the negative sign, that becomes positive, plus twice the product of the two. So we have a negative sign in there, so minus 2 times the square root of 7x minus 10 times the square root of 5x minus 9, and that equals the right side squared, which is simply 1. Now notice we end up with the product of two radicals on the left side, and that's where we're in trouble, because now we're going to have to square both sides again once we separate the radicals from the non-radicals, so let's move all these terms to the right side. Before we do that, let's collect common terms. So 7x plus 5x is 12x, minus 10 minus 9, that's minus 19, minus 2 times the square root of 7x minus 10 times the square root of 5x minus 9 equals 1. And now we can go ahead and move all those terms to the other side. So we have minus 2 times the square root of 7x minus 10, that stays here, times the square root of 5x minus 9, that stays on the left side, and that equals 1 minus 12x, and the minus 19 becomes a plus 19. Or, simplify it, I get minus 2 times the square root of 7x minus 10 times the square root of 5x minus 9 equals, well, that gives me uh, minus 12x plus 20. And now notice that all the terms are even. I can divide both sides by negative 2 because I like to get rid of these negatives here. So divide the left side by negative 2, and this by negative 2, and this by negative 2, which gives me the square root of 7x minus 10 times the square root of 5x minus 9 equals 6x minus 10. And now notice... I'm ready to square both sides again. So I'm going to square the left side, and I'm going to square the right side. When I square the left side, I simply have 7x minus 10 multiplied times 5x minus 9. On the right side, I have 6x minus 10 squared. That gives me 36x squared minus twice the product of the two. So that would be, um, or twice the product of the two, that's minus 60 times 2, which is minus 120x and plus the last term squared to 100. Notice, I also, have to square, I also have to multiply the left side, so that gives me 35x squared minus 63x minus 50x and plus 90 equals 36x squared minus 120x plus 100. I think you're beginning to see why we don't want to do it like this. But hey, we're almost there. Let's keep going. So let's move everything over to the, to the left side. So we end up with 0 is equal to, on the right side, we already have 36x squared minus 120x and plus 100. Let's move to the right. The 35x becomes a minus 35x squared, I should say. Uh, let's see, together this, this is 113x, that becomes a plus 113x, so plus 113x, and minus, uh, plus 90 becomes minus 90, and that equals 0. Oh, we already have an equal to 0 on the other side. We don't need to do it twice. There we go. All right, let's collect common terms. 0 equals 36x squared minus 35x squared, which is simply x squared, minus 120x plus 113 is minus 7x, and 100 minus 90 is plus 10. All right, that should look familiar if you remember that problem. This can easily be factored, so 0 
is equal to, that would be x times x. Both signs must be negative. When I multiply, I get 10. When I add, I get 7. That would be 2 and 5, which means x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0, which means x equals 2, or x equals 5. So those were the two possible answers. When we plug them into our original equation, both of them, I believe, ended up being correct, but let's quickly check. x equals 2, let's check. If we do that, we get the square root of 7 times 2 minus 10, minus the square root of 5 times 2 minus 9. Is that equal to question mark 1? Because remember, we had not yet squared both sides. So that's 14 minus 10, which is the square root of 4, minus, that's 10 minus 9, which is the square root of 1. Is that equal to question mark 1? And so 2 minus 1, is that equal to question mark 1? 1 equals 1, yes. And that means x equals 2 was valid. We could do the same for check if x equals 5. And so what we get is we get the square root of 7 times 5, which is 35 minus 10, minus the square root of 25 minus 9 equals question mark 1. So this is the square root of 25 minus the square root of 16. Is that equal to 1? And sure enough, 5 minus 4 equals 1. And so both x equals 2 and x equals 5 are indeed the solutions. But notice it took us a whole lot more work to get to that same solution. I definitely would recommend moving one of the radicals to the other side before you square both sides. If not, you can't get the answer, but it's a lot more work. And that is how it's done.